that's probably not the first thing to or the most fundamental thing to do, but it uh, fits nicely what uh, Andrew was showing. So here I'm going to uh, create, uh, this is a, a Visual Studio code. Uh, Andrew was using also Visual Studio code. This is uh, a chat book. You can see this is a Raku chat book um, uh, kernel. So this is a Jupyter notebook with a Raku chat book. So if I, if I ask for, you know, different kernels, you might see different kernels being uh, uh, lined up here. So here first I'm going to use, um, uh, I'm going to specify open AI uh, and I'm going to dictate how many people live in Brazil. And ideally I'm going to get the result. One of the goodies with this um, is that um, when, you, uh, when, you, when you use this uh, type of functionalities here, the result from the large language models is automatically placed in the in the clipboard. So this is what I see. I just press Control V uh, or Command V, and I'm getting uh, this uh, result into a, a cell. All right. So I'm going to produce a new cell. This is with OpenAI. I also have connections to Palm. Palm. This is the Google large language model, and so I'm going to make a new code cell, and I'm going to say Palm here, and I'm going to list different styles of Japanese paintings. And so let's see what we're going to get. So uh, actually, let's actually do something here. So with this uh, this uh, implementation of a chat book, I can specify that I want the result to be uh, put into markdown. And this is what you see here. So when I say this, uh, when I make this specification, we get the result uh, into markdown. The previous result was uh, just plain text, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use another, I make another cell, use uh, DALI. DALI is an image generation uh, service by OpenAI. And I'm going to dictate, make a Japanese style painting with autumn landscape. And let's say, choose the first one, right? So I'm going to use, uh, say, Yamato, Yamato E, right? And so this is going to presumably produce uh, some painting uh, in a Japanese style whenever it comes. It's thinking too long. Okay, well, it seems to be the case. I can also specify that I want, say, three paintings and I want um, uh, the size to be uh, medium. Right, let's see what is going to uh, ED. Oh, right. Let's see what is going to happen. So ideally we're going to get uh, free, free paintings with this. All right, so while is this um, uh, thinking about, this is pretty simplistic in a sense, right? So this direct access, uh, you're directly using the services provided, provided by say uh, ChatGPT, OpenAI or Palm by Google, right? But that's not, uh, I mean, it's out here, the paintings, right? And uh, I can also say, uh, for example, something else, right? I mean, actually, let's let's drop this example. Let's not do anything further. So the direct access is, um, of course, one way to, to kind of access these uh, services. The advantages is that we're using the web API in a fairly direct manner. And uh, so I'm actually going to show uh, something here. So this is the OpenAI Playground. This is a command line interface with this uh, package, Raku, www.openai. I'm going to dictate what is the population of India. And I'm going to evaluate this and presumably I'm going to get some results, right? So, so, all right, so this is again, direct access. I might prefer to do something else. Like uh, I might prefer to use um, uh, chat, uh, chat, um, chat objects and so this is what i'm going to, to show next so here i'm going to uh to use a, a chat object i'm going to name it uh, say uh, yoda yoda one and i'm going to say what the prompt is uh is uh, this um is this uh, uh it's yoda and i'm going to explain what this abbreviation means and i'm here going to dictate hi who are you? And ideally, we're going to get um, a response by Yoda. Now, uh, from now on, I can actually access this uh, chat object uh, with uh, this uh, specification and uh, ask other questions. How many students did you teach? 
what is the color of your laser saber? All right, so ideally we're going to get some result. Now, to some to some extent, I should convince you that uh, this is uh, producing whatever the interaction here is is actually global within this uh, chat book, right? So it's not one off uh, evaluation. So what I'm going to do next is uh, presumably going to be convincing about uh, that. So I'm going to say um, that I want uh, the previous result to be translated into German. And I'm going to specify this with the caret symbol. So translate is a function. I say German, the caret symbol means the previous thing, whatever it was said in that chat with this. And so presumably this here, Filia Schuller on the return. Yeah, it seems to be, it seems to be pretty, pretty close. All right. So uh, this is this is the interaction with uh, the chat objects. And um, before going further, uh, I the last example, this is the last live coding example I'm going to be doing is that uh, I'm going to show uh, how we generate some code. Uh, for example, here with uh, some plain chat, I'm going to say, show mathematical formulas and Raku code for solving the quadratic equation. And so ideally this is going to produce something we, you know, related to whatever I asked. And again, um, actually, I might say, look, I mean, I actually want this to be in this uh, markdown output, right? Because it's going to be more convenient. And so, uh, so yeah, you can see if I, when I said markdown, because I did say that I want mathematical formulas and, uh, and you know, uh, Raku code, you can see what the Raku code has been placed in this, uh, in this, um, in this cell. Now, this was not completed because I don't, uh, it didn't specify, uh, I, there were not enough tokens by default. So I can say that I want more tokens, right? And uh, I mean, ideally this is going to, to kind of, uh, to produce the full output, right? It is going to have enough uh, tokens to produce the full output. All right, so now again, you know, I can copy this text and, uh, you know, evaluate it and et cetera, right? So I can do uh, some code evaluations and et cetera. I'm not going to go further with that. All right, so um, this was more or less um, the chat book um, uh, discussion. So I want to kind of start with the, uh, with the, um, to continue, you know, with the conclusions actually. So why we are doing this large language models with uh, with Raku? And so, first of all, we do need this type of um, this type of um, uh, this type of um, dynamic interaction of uh, Raku with the large language models. This dynamic interaction have to include in notebook solution, in which we actually kind of store the results and we can. Uh, facilitate the interaction, right? We say automatic copying to the clipboard, clipboard, formatting of text and so forth. And so this is one of the motivations uh, for big motivation to develop a framework of uh, different functionalities with which uh, uh, Raku can be extended, so to speak, with large language models or the other way around, right? So Raku presumably being very good with um, working with um, with text, extracting text, uh, it should be a natural type of marriage with uh, the large language models. And um, I'm going to try to see in the chat, uh, let me access the chats here. So any questions here so far? Uh, so uh, how did I make uh, the Jupyter to do that? Well, uh, a very good question. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to, uh, I had this open somewhere. So these are the packages which I'm, uh, with, I have developed for interacting with, um, with um, the large language models. There is a Jupyter chatbook package, which is based on Brian Dugan's, um, Brian Dugan's um, uh, Jupyter, oh, this is not chatbook. It's called Jupyter kernel, right? So hopefully this is going to go to the right right link. Yeah, so uh, I'm 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 building on top of that, right? And so I uh, I um I'm using this uh, yeah using this chatbook in order to use in order to use uh, uh, the functionalities I showed. We need to have a, a proper um, a proper kind of um, interaction for this. What I was showing here was the 
the last examples the notebook notebook white chats right so the contextual there throughout the whole uh notebook in order to have this i need to uh, to have this uh, fun fun fundamental functionalities right how do i specify configurations and evaluators of functions how do i specify and have you know um large language model chat objects so uh, this is actually i need to i need to discuss this anyway right so here um, if you use Jupyter chat books, uh, they they understand Mermaid, right? Mermaid, uh, if you're not familiar, Mermaid JS is a, a type of um, diagram specification language. So you can see here, uh, I have this uh, diagram specification and I have plotted it, right? So what is happening? So here, right? Uh, again, I'm continuous. I'm answering the question, how did I make Jupyter to do that? So I, for each uh, Jupyter session, I have um, a database of chat objects. And so when you go to the Jupyter frontend, right? When you get to the input of the cell, right? We kind of go, okay, well, do we know this ID? Like if this, if we don't specify ID, there's some default ID. If you specify ID, like I was uh, showing the ID, you're the one, uh, YD1, then that particular chat object is retrieved from the database. Now, if there's some kind of Kind of prompt um, a prompt uh, DSL. This was with um, you know at Yoda, right? What I was showing here, right? So let me actually. So this is a prompt DSL type of thing. This is a prompt request prompt expansion. This here also did a prompt expansion. So I have a database of um, a, a database of prompts around 220 prompts, and um, where if you see this uh, type of uh, specification for prompt expansion, uh, it is being accessed. So this is the package uh, LLM prompts, right? So you can see some examples here, you know, it's like basically doing that. If you if you are curious to kind of see what the actual prompts are, uh, you can you can see in the resources, uh, this is how this uh, prompt uh, prompts JSON, you know, all the prompts are being listed here. So the advantage of this approach is that you can utilize these prompts in other languages. Like say I reprogrammed this in Python and I'm using the same prompts here. I harvested the prompts uh, uh, from uh, from the Wolfram, Wolfram uh, rep repository, which let me see, can I get it here? Wolfram prompts. So uh, Wolfram prompt repository has, um, yeah, has few hundred um, prompts and they're roughly, roughly separated into personas, functions, and modifiers. So I use the Yoda persona and I use the function translate, for example, right, in this particular case. All right, so um, a very good question, thank you. Um, let me kind of uh, return back to this, um, to this diagram. So what I was saying is that if we get, uh, we get the input into the uh, chat book, uh, we find the appropriate chat object. If there is no such object we create it, then we go to the prompt database, we do expansion if we have to, and then we go to the actual uh, services which provide the um, which provide the large language models. In this particular case, I'm showing only say Palm uh, by Google and uh, OpenAI's whatever Chat GPT. You can have some others like say I don't know there's a Yandex GPT. There's uh, I mean I can all I I have experimented with my own uh, small language models uh, which can be plugged in into this uh, whole framework. All right, so um, maybe I should move on and not. Um, not look further into the questions, but um, all right, let me try to see. All right, so uh, let me continue with the presentation. So uh, this, uh, I, I think I, I, I discussed enough motivation, but I want to mention a, a couple of um, use cases here. First of all, this cannot be ignored, a large language models, right? Everybody's, I personally, as a senior data scientist or senior research scientist, whatever, you know, I'm using to brand myself. I mean, everybody's asking me about this in one way or the other. So some familiarity and ability to utilize it is important. Is this with Raku, right? Maybe, maybe not, right? But it doesn't matter to some extent. It's a, it's a great way to familiarize yourself with uh, these functionalities by 
you know, programming them. I'm also having a software engineering perspective for this. Another thing is what um, I'm very interested in uh, this, uh, the so-called um, template engine functionalities. And I'm going to, to show here, actually I had some example prepared. Let me, let me browse to it. Like imagine you give this kind of free text, so to speak. I mean, not arbitrarily, but you know, extract 20 topics from the text corpus corpus A abstracts using the method uh, non-negative matrix factorization, show statistical tesoros for the words neural function in notebook. This generates this function, concretize, generates uh, the um, generates this um, this code, right? So I wanted to implement this in Raku and I wanted to this implement it in Morphemarica. And the only reason it's implemented in Morphemarica is because Morphemarica, since four or five years ago, had a function called find textual answer. So I wanted to do find textual answer in Raku. I mean, let me see, do I have it somewhere here, right? So I might, right? Uh, so some, uh, so uh, for me, it was uh, very, very important to this type of functionality. And in order to do that, I, I couldn't just stay with the simple access of uh, large language model services packages like www.openai, www.palm. I need to do this uh, LLM functions, LLM chat objects and so forth, right? Now you can see here, I have, um, this is the, this is a, a Raku package, right? Find textual answer. So you can see here that I have used an excerpt from um, Nikolaus Tesla's biography and I have asked here, you know, uh, a question, right? Where I lived and I said, well, give me three answers, right? And here, the finder is being found right? and getting these results. Now, I can have multiple questions, and you can see this is my use case, right? So this is uh, a uh, computational workflow specification about classification, right? So I am uh, asking this question, which data set, what is the method, which matrix to be shown? And so I'm getting some results here. And I can request this to be done with pairs and I can actually have this. So this result here, it's already actionable. If I have, if I have a template for, if I know how to do classification uh, pipelines, I can just fill in this, uh, this arguments and produce uh, the corresponding, corresponding code and so forth. All right. So again, you know, for me, this was one of the primary um, use cases. I didn't have time to implement this and to to kind of uh, have uh, to show this, but for another thing is uh, the embeddings, right? With um, large language models, you can get this related semantic analysis for free, so to speak, right? So you can you can uh, do text to send text to the large language models, and uh, with that you can uh, produce uh, certain certain vectors, which then you can use to do uh, to do some type of um, Computations. Let me actually show this. I'm going to go to Raku land and I'm going to uh, say here Palm and um, Palm here. There should be some example with embeddings. Maybe it's this one, right? So uh, let me see. Yeah. So basically, you can see I have this uh, free text and I have called this uh, embeddings and then produce these free vectors and then. I can actually do some kind of uh, cross tabulation, make some kind of inner product uh, between them. And I think uh, maybe a better example about what I'm talking about is in this um, OpenAI package. Uh, I apologize, I should have uh, prepared, prepared this uh, better. But uh, yeah, somewhere here, right? Ideally, uh, this is a great example. Unfortunately, it doesn't get displayed fairly well here. So I'm going to uh, go to uh, go to the um, uh, GitHub repository, right? And so somewhere here, we should be able to see this table, right? Which corresponds to the embeddings. So this here it's finding the inner product between the between the embeddings. Uh, let me see. This is the inner product, right? So anyway, uh, this was uh, this. As I say, it's uh, it has been a primary motivation for me because if I can do related semantic analysis in that way through the large language models, I can produce recommender systems, say in Raku, right? Otherwise, in order to do related semantic analysis in Raku, I need to implement a bunch of uh, functionalities like uh, sparse matrix, uh, linear algebra, and so forth, right? And so a variety of methods for factorization and so forth. I already covered the prompts. There are like um, 220 prompts. I also reprogrammed them in Python. 
And I mentioned the service access here and the command line interface. So uh, let's go to uh, this uh, literate uh, uh, programming um, uh, application. Before doing that, let me look into the questions here. Uh, the comments in the chat, maybe there's a question. Actually, if anyone has any questions, please do ask. All right, so um, the Markdown templates, and that's a fun example. It's, um, it's one of the maybe motivations to, let me locate it here. So um, imagine that you want to tell people how they should um, quit Python, right? And uh, and do something else, right? Like say use Raku. So I mean, this uh, this uh, this is uh, an example template. So some of the end products here, let me find it, right? So I think it's this one, you know, yeah. 12 steps uh, guide to quit Python and replace it with Raku, right? So this is a generated document using uh, large language models. And so, I mean, you can see here that, uh, you know, like, yeah, you should acknowledge your addiction to programming in Python and uh, you should, I don't know, you should delete uh, the, the Python, whatever, right? And so forth, right? And then there should be some kind of steps about uh, Raku at some point. So what is happening here? There is like uh, this uh, template, which you can see, it's uh, this is a markdown document, right? So if you look at uh, this, uh, this is a markdown uh, document, right? And I have this, um, let me see how well I have these code cells, right? Which uh, say, um, which say that we're going to be using these packages, for example, and so we want to hide the results and we don't want this cell to be seen. So this is what these parameters say. And then uh, there's a section called simply put, right? So this is what we see here. This is this section. And in this section, we say, uh, okay, well, generate uh, seven steps outline list uh, with Arabic numerals with uh, bold prefixes for item and so forth, right? Ah, this is here for R, but same goes for Python and whatever it is. And I'm actually uh, giving some hints why why uh, this uh, what this list should contain. So again, you know, you can see I'm specifying certain values for the actual for the actual palm for the actual service uh, how to be. Uh, how to be invoked, what parameters, number of tokens, uh, you know, uh, temperature, and so forth. And I'm also saying, but this the this cell itself shouldn't be echoed, right? And so, and to the uh, the other, the other thing is that um, when the effect of this is that we are going to have this section which looks like a you know like a generated document written, right? There's no you don't see the the blueprint, so to speak, with the Raku code, which generated this uh, this section. And similarly, we can have um, instead of having a open uh, sorry open AI or Palm or some large language model uh, uh, cell here, I can have a, a Perl of six or Raku Raku cell in which I'm actually saying how the how to expand on each of these questions. So basically I'm using large language models here to expand upon each of the each of the points which have been generated. And so this is what you see here. And I'm also saying that you know this should be used as a the, the text should be quoted and the section should be numbered and so forth, right? So um, th this uh, this is a very interesting technique. Uh, I uh, again I developed this um, uh, probably like uh, two years ago, I was uh, heavily borrowing from ideas from uh, Brian Dugan's uh, package on uh, Jupyter kernel. So this, this is a computational markdown. I mean, I, I've been discussing this in variety of um, in variety of uh, my um, my blog posts. Uh, so, and I consider it to be a fairly fairly useful technique in general, right? This is most of the time how I generate the documentation for for my uh, Raku packages, right? I have a I have a, a computational readme and this computational readme produces the Uvan uh, version of, of it. All right, so uh, going uh, going to, to other examples here, a uh, very interesting perspective is to, for, for doing, uh, it's a genera generating test from descriptions. So we can do, uh, we can, use plain text or we can use Gherkin examples. Uh, I think I, 
I prepared uh, I prepared a diagram for this, but maybe I haven't I haven't included it here. I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, look too diligently for this, but I do want to mention uh, that package uh, about Gherkin. It's uh, it's an it's uh, relatively easy to to think about using um, large language models in that way because in general. Uh, Gherkin is is uh, is made to to actually deal with um, with uh, natural text, right? We specify we specify our the way we specify our scenarios, like what you see here, right? We can specify that we have this feature, we have a scenario, we specify uh, certain rules, and then it's, uh, some some code is being generated. And we can do this both ways, right? We can generate code from Gherkin, and you can generate uh, Gherkin from from the code, right? And so this is what this uh, this example is referring to. This is probably more interesting. Um, this is generating a package documentation from uh, from tests. Uh, many people. Who are who are going to be um, publishing uh, packages? Who are publishing and going to be publishing packages in say Oracle land? They do provide the tests, but they don't provide documentation. Maybe uh, Martin is going to discuss this. Uh, but one of the things to to provide documentation, at least nominal documentation, is to use large language models with minimal hinting, minimal prompting, and um, Using uh, say a certain um, using uh, using tests to to produce the documentation, summarizing what it is there. Summarizing doesn't work that well. I mean, in a sense, you need to kind of go through uh, through the through the uh, through the documentation in order to generalize it. I um, I think I, I have several examples about that, but I don't. I'm not sure how interesting this is. Uh, so um, the idea is what. Um, yeah, let's actually do this uh, conversation between two characters. So imagine you have two chat objects and uh, you want to you want to make them converse. So here I'm actually trying to find a particular notebook with this. So um, yeah, let me zoom out, zoom in here. And um, so I can have uh, Man versus machine, machine versus man, and so forth, right? Obviously, we can have uh, machine versus machine. So somewhere here, I hope I have this. Let me see. It's uh, it's a simple, uh, they're basically two prompts, right? One for the Oracle, one for the guesser. And then I have a simple loop in which they interact with each other. They're basically feeding each other's uh, guesses and results. and no. So basically, I do need to provide some kind of secret number to be evaluated beforehand, right? Then, you know, there's some kind of discussion. What is the secret number? And uh, is this, is that, it's less, whatever. Sometimes think people get, you know, the, the conversation and the, the, the people who are talking of the people, the personas, uh, the large language model personas who are talking here, they get confused. But, you know, it's an interesting, interesting uh, type of use case. So what is the what would be more interesting application about this? Imagine that you want to produce uh, different dialogues for training purposes, like say clerks in hotels or some kind of uh, commodity uh, goods shipping kind of company and, and et cetera, right? So some kind of um, uh, dialogues that can be used for training, they can be used for like say uh, testing uh, the system and so forth, right? All right, so... Um, and this is uh, this was all you know from this literate programming uh, perspective. I'm going to be discussing um, large language um, work workflows. Actually, a very important um, um, example here is something I don't uh, I I really want to discuss, and it's not listed here. This is uh, this is about um, um, too long didn't read uh, documentation utilization and. Uh, uh, so, as an example, we are going to uh, look into uh, the Raku package AppRack, which um, uh, is developed by Elizabeth uh, Matthewson. Um, so, so somewhere here, I think I have it right. So, and so, what is the what is the idea here? This uh, package is a way to 
way too large. It has 127 or 200, whatever parameters, right? And so instead of um, instead of um, reading all the documentation, which was uh, diligently provided by Elizabeth, let me actually see uh, where, where is this, right? So ideally somewhere here, right? Yeah, you can see I have this, uh, we have this markdown documents, right? Now I can just take just, but I can take uh, this, um, uh, this uh, code snippets here. So the uh, rack code is being uh, pre prefixed, so to speak, or there is a comment here. And so imagine I can uh, use this for training. I can basically make the so-called few shot training in um, large language models. And I can say, okay, given this kind of text, you need to produce this kind of uh, text, right? So, and uh, this is what uh, what this um, uh, this uh, the procedure is here. I'm taking all of the all of the uh, documents related to this to APRAC. The package Markdown Grammar uh, knows how to parse um, knows at this point uh, how to parse uh, Markdown uh, documents and extract uh, code uh, code fragments. And uh, from this, I make this uh, comment and code pairs, I extract them, uh, I make the corresponding uh, large language model example function to, to translate, to make this translation from the natural language uh, command to the APRAC commands. And uh, then, uh, then of course, we need to test it. So, so I'm not going to go through all of the elements here. This is basically the different blocks are being uh, taken. You can see I have this key, I have this value. So basically this is my training set. Um, I can, um, uh, after I have produced the corresponding um, examples, I can, I, of course, I need to verify. One way is to ask the large language models to produce uh, send 10 or 20 or 200 random uh, statements, random requests for doing um, what APRAC is supposed to be doing, like finding files uh, in, a, in, a, in a directory. And so, so it's, it is something which is a fairly well-known playground, right? And so they, this can be, this can be uh, easily, it is easily produced. And then we need to basically, so this is what I'm discussing here, right? So I have generated the random commands, right? And I have uh, also generating the corresponding uh, APRAC. It's an interesting question. Is, are this, uh, are this uh, correct? The commands which are being uh, generated, are they correct? Do they run? And if they run, do they actually, so they might not run, right? They might be just not executable. But if they're executable, do they produce what was actually requested? This is actually not that hard to really uh, stage as tests, but you know, I, I haven't done it. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, Andrew, how are we with time? How much more minutes do I have? Uh, I think some kind of nine minutes. Oh, okay. Well, um, Hmm. So, yeah, I wanted to discuss comparison with uh, Python and uh, and Wolfram language or Mathematica, and actually, this is probably it's a it's a nice way to, to kind of do that. So let me bring um, uh, this uh, a particular notebook here. I'm going to close uh, some of this and so let me open. So I think I had this. All right. So uh, this is probably the more important, um, um, more important um, software engineering from software engineering perspective part of the talk. So large language models they hallucinate results. They're not reliable. You shouldn't trust them. And uh, if you want to use them in certain computational workflows, what exactly do you do? And so one of the ways to to do that is to actually uh, have this large language model functions, which uh, let you specify, let me zoom in here, which let you specify certain templates. You can see this is a string template or this is a pure function, whatever you call it, right, in, in Raku. So, and you can specify certain configurations. In this particular case, I'm saying, but I want to uh, use OpenAI with a certain temperature. Also, I'm saying, but I want the um, result to be uh, to be the result I have set here in the function itself, but I want the result to be in JSON. But I'm also saying with this form, but uh, the the so-called sub parser JSON sub parser needs to be applied. So when I apply this uh, function, so which was uh, created here, you can see how 
Uh, these arguments, GDP top 10 largest countries in 2022 have been filled in. It is what is the GDP of the top 10 largest countries in 2022? Give the results in as a name, number, dictionary in JSON format, right? So we get here because I applied this uh, uh, sub parser JSON. I, I can, you can see this is actually a Raku, Raku code, right? And uh, this is a Raku hash, uh, hash object. And so here I actually visualize it in some way. I'm using here, uh, I'm using here one of the functions of uh, data reshapers. So now there's an interesting thing here. If I want to plot this data and do something with it, right? What do we do with this trillion USD? I mean, this is very inconvenient. So this can be handled handled in a, several ways. We can actually have another large language model function, which let us um, let us. Um, uh, remove this, right? Remove this uh, this code, right? Alternatively, I can just do it with Raku. Use my Raku prowess, so to speak, to manipulate uh, text. And so, and then after I have done this, I want to do this. You know, I want to do this uh, plotting. In this particular case, I have a, a sub parser which is a numeric. Since all of these are trillion USD, and say I'm interested in uh, uh, all of this have trillion USD as a suffix, right? And I'm interested in a comparative type of plot. You can see with this sub parser numeric, I'm just uh, getting those numerical results and I'm making this uh, uh, text plot. Instead of using this uh, textual plot, I'm, I can also use a JavaScript plot, which does uh, this uh, bar, bar charts and et cetera. I have discussed this in, in some of my blogs about in some of videos about using JavaScript plotting, right? Uh, using Raku specifications for uh, for producing um, uh, JavaScript plots. All right, so here uh, I'm going to move uh, next to uh, some other examples about um, data data retrieval and uh, plotting and whatnot. And this is the example function I was talking about. So this is also the so-called few shot examples, which I was using to do uh, the too long didn't read uh, documentation training. So you can see here how this uh, some numbers with commas have been translated into some kind of proper Raku uh, Raku specifications. And here you see the million, trillion, and so forth, right? So, all right. So then, uh, if I this example function, so this is a large language model function. This uh, large language models they do facilitate example functions. So uh, we can see here how I have applied it to to the output uh, above and we're producing you know something this num norm right, this normalization function here uh, is producing well normalized results um very interestingly and I'm going to uh to to kind of go to this uh, section here is the conversion uh, to Raku objects so imagine you want to uh, ask certain questions which are related to say physics, chemistry, whatever it is, biology, and you have corresponding um, Raku packages that uh, can deal with those. And so here uh, you can see like I have this example function again, which tells me how the numerical results should be interpreted in a certain um, certain type of Raku code. This is uh, a package uh, written by Steve Rowe, uh, physics units. And so you can see here, like I'm asking, what is the average speed of whatever in units of whatever, right? And so we are looking at say rocket leaving Earth meters per second. We get this result. Now I apply my uh, my example uh, function here, and then we get this code. Now if I evaluate it, I'm getting this object, right? So and then I can manipulate it further. Similarly, or oh, similarly, but. Uh, Imagine you want to do certain chemical computations, right? And so here, this is actually showing some uh, stoichiometry formulas being manipulated in this way. So I'm uh, requesting uh, three formulas, which uh, include sulfur. And so, and then I, I get these formulas. It's an interesting question, are they balanced? They're not. And this is one of the proofs that um, large language models uh, hallucinate the results. So I might want to uh, verify uh, this uh, this balancing. I want to, I can probably want to do the balancing myself and so forth. And this is what is happening here. Um, a very interesting point uh, in application is uh, to do name entity recognition, which is a relatively difficult um, uh, problem. And so here, this example shows how we can, um, well, 
actually it doesn't show anyway uh if this worked right uh, i should have evaluated this so uh the idea is that we can uh, extract album names and years from uh from text which has been generated right say uh, I have used uh, the large language model access to to extract a certain uh, certain biography of a certain singer, and then you know I'm actually asking you know different uh, different results, uh, different uh, elements of it. Like say uh, the discography to be to be done, you can see it actually here done for uh, for a bunch of artists, right? So I have generated uh, random artists like Taylor Swift, Adele, and so forth, right? So this is when this actually worked. A very interesting thing is, can you can you can you rely can you get reliably the same results when you're asking this? So I use this package uh, which is called type system. I use it for other purposes, and so this type system you can see. I mean, you can make some kind of statistics. This is the purpose for this. We using this package type system. I can make some statistics uh, uh, around um, around. Um, uh, the evaluation of the large language models and see how reliable they might be in some computational workflows. So uh, I don't think I have time to do the comparison, but you can see I did reprogram uh, the Jupyter chatbook into a Python chatbook. And if you're interested, you can you can say, you know, uh, see it somewhere here. You can see it in uh, PyPy or whatever, right? And um, there's certain correspondence, right, with uh, corresponding Wolfram language functionalities. I mean, I have heavily borrowed ideas from them. And I think this um, this um, finishes my presentation. Any questions? Uh, hi Anton, I have a question. Uh, yes. This is Brian. So thanks for the thanks for the shout out, uh, especially and um, thanks for uh, me. Love love the chat book. Um, I guess one question for me is um, is what other sort of fundamental features do you think would be useful um, from the kernel? Um, I, I see like a lot of stuff with the magics um, that's that's um, sort of pushing the boundaries of what's built in. And are there any other sort of deeper issues, you know, with either with the kernel or with like the Jupyter architecture in general that are like limitations? Um, this is a, I can have very long and confused answer for this, but um, one of the, one of the reasons uh, I would say I did this comparison, right? Comparison implementation in uh, Jupyter, uh, Jupyter framework in Python is that, it's uh, it's impressive how easy it is to to add new functionalities into into uh, to extend the Jupyter framework for Python, right? They have a very streamlined way of doing uh, of doing that. It is uh, it is uh, uh, it was surprisingly easy to some extent. That's why I, I I did it. If I had to do the same work which I did with um, with uh, Raku, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done it. I mean and. I'm sorry if I'm talking uh, Python here, but you can see, like, say, the actual code. I mean, Python being very, you know, spread out language, so to speak. But if you look at the actual code, it's not that it's not that big. It's mostly me specifying uh, how to do uh, how to to parse the different arguments, and then after that, you know, it's just kind of uh, calling the underlying functions. Of course, I have just prompt functions and large language model functions packages implemented already. But one of the greatest advantage of using Python is that the, the corresponding large language model services, they already provide the access to those large language models right in Python. And so for me, this was a, a great speed up. One of the consequences of this is that uh, it's actually, uh, you cannot have such a nice detailed uh, detailed specification of parameters with Python. You need to follow a certain, a certain, uh, a certain uh, type of uh, of specifications. Let me actually bring uh, some example here. This is the this is the Python Jupyter chatbook, right? So I need to uh, load the load the magic, right? And I am, for example, you see, you you have provided this redirection to Markdown. Here I need to specify that I want the result to be Markdown. So we're using a command line type of uh, specifications to do the to do the the magics. 
that's actually convenient because everybody more or less knows the command line specifications, I guess, right? And people need to be trained in the Raku style. But with the Raku style of magics, I can do arbitrarily, you know, arbitrarily convenient magic, so to speak, right? And so another thing to mention here is that, uh, right, I mean, it is like when I have this meta meta objects, right, to access uh, this, uh, this um, uh, to access the, the chat objects database, it is, I mean, I had to make certain decisions in uh, in Python, right, for this. Now, what exactly is would be better, right, for the Jupyter framework? Do you envision some other people to be extending uh, extending Jupyter, Jupyter kernel relatively easily, the way I did, right? But, I mean, my, my extension was not easy, right? I mean, but I'm claiming the one is easy. But then if you do it, is it worth it, right? Who, I mean, I honestly... And I'm being obnoxious here, probably, but Rack community is not that interested in in Jupyter, right? In the Jupyter framework. So, I'm sorry, I'm talking on and on. So, I, hopefully, I answered your question. So, yeah, that's Actually, good. good. Thanks. For that. Yeah, I mean, and I was also just wondering anything besides magics that were that were sort of limits. Uh, okay. Yes. Like, say, uh, um, I mean, the extensions, they can be grouped in two ways, right? Uh, they can be grouped into accessing external services, like say this mermaid diagrams, like what you see here, right? Uh, I, I have made a mermaid magic, right? Which basically takes this code, right? This mermaid code and sends it to mermaid ink. Mermaid ink is a, is a you know, so you might decide to, to kind of streamline this type of, this type of functionality, right? Like, because I do it, like another thing is DeepL, right? This is a, a service for translating uh, languages, right? They use neural networks and et cetera. But imagine I wanna also have like some DeepL and put some language here and gets in, getting translated and so forth, right? So I have variety of use cases, which are just this. I have certain package, say www blah, blah in, uh, in, uh, in Raku, and I want to very easily plug in uh, this into a cell in Jupyter. So I would say this can be this can be a good enough uh, architectural challenge, which is worth putting, uh, so to speak, in the mainstream Jupyter kernel. Do it make sense? Yeah, hopefully. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> right. Other questions? Um, I need to see chat messages, I guess. And um, okay, well, uh, yeah. I, I assume that was it. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So.